we had this opportunity to pitch Rupert Murdoch. So uh, Michael, who's my investor, comes to me and says, hey, we got invited to this thing. Um, basically, every year during CES, Rupert Murdoch uh, brings all the CEOs of his companies um, through News Corp. So they own Wall Street Journal, I think, or New York, uh, New York Post, they own and Fox, and Sky. And, and like, then they own uh, Penguin Publishing. Right. They own... Um, uh, Realtor.com. So he is the media mogul, right? Like, that's cool. So basically, once a year, they all get together. It's during CES. They go to the Wynn, and they rent out the entire top floor of Wynn. And so all the rooms there are all the execs. And they have the biggest suite, the penthouse suite of the Wynn. And what they do is, they, and I, I really admire this, they go from 8 a.m. to about 7 p.m. every single day for two days straight. And every hour is just, they, they just bring in a speaker. Um, not like a speaker, it's like a, an industry leader from something and they just, um, they just grill them. So it's like, you, you start by just telling me a little bit about your business and then it's 30 minutes of Q and a from the CEOs of all these companies. Cause they're trying to figure out, okay, how do we play into this? So when I was there, it was like literally CEO of Google, CEO of Slack, number three guy at Facebook, just back to Wait, back to back. The CEO of Google was the one getting grilled. Yeah, he would go and he would just explain. Here's what. Here's where we're going Why next the fuck year. Would that guy isn't that guy what? because these are big media partners for them. They they want to have these media partners working with them. So they'll say, here's where we're going next year, and, and, but it's off the record, right? So it's more candid than you're ever going to get these guys. And I, they told me you can just come for your slot. You know this. 45 minute slot but rupert's here the whole but time. i was like i'm sitting here the whole day like this is why, like with why my did popcorn. you get to sit there because we were going to present at the end of the day and so we had access oh. so i just sat there at 8 a.m i'm there with my seat so here's what i noticed during the day a lot of the ceos you know they'd be interested in certain people but for the most part you know they get hungry they go to the bathroom rupert murdoch i don't know how old he is this guy's like 80s like he looks old and he is old and that guy sat right up front with a paper and a pencil, did not get up, did not take a break. He was the he most didn't take, a piss. didn't take a piss. He was the most attentive. He asked the best questions. He was like a machine, and I was like, "That's why this guy's Rupert Murdoch." I was so impressed by this guy, uh, his just endurance, really, and also just his level of focus, where everybody else was wandering um, throughout the day because that's what you normally do, and that's kind of contagious. Did he ask questions? But I loved how the leader was like on point. Because it held everybody else like closer to that standard. Did he ask questions? He asked good questions, yeah. Which is funny because if you're the CEO of one of his companies, you're already maybe a billion, and some of them might be billionaire. I mean, you're a, you're you're up there. I don't know if you're billionaire, but yeah, you're maybe doing super well. If you sold, like, it'd be like your. It was like the CEO of Fox Studios. Like, oh yeah, we make these movies for this year, and it's like, oh whatever, you know, Marvel. But like, it's like these are big individual brands. You're you're a big, you're a big swinging dick. You're yeah, a big guy. So that was incredible. I just thought that was really cool, and I got to give him props for that. It was, I was very impressed. That's crazy. Uh, what, anything else that we <laughs> Where do we go from, from here? This? Okay, a different one uh, that's related Wait, no, to what, what you we were learn from that thing. Anything else? I'm trying to think about what, what else was important. I think another piece that was, that was cool there was setting his company up for success because the media business, I mean, a lot of his stuff was, he literally started with newspapers, local newspapers. And so you very easily companies like that can miss all these shifts and become like extinct. I think one of the reasons they haven't is because he probably has this learning culture and um, sounds corny, but what he did was pretty badass. It was like, we're here. We're not going to go tell these guys what, what, what the world is. We're going to be the listener. We're going to be the student here. And, um, and so I thought that was pretty badass that he set up, he architected these days, which was just, you know, action packed with like top, top people of the world coming and teaching them about the future. And even us, like, why did he have us? He had four startup slots. Uh, you know, it was all big companies. And he had four startup slots. We were one of the startup slots. You got grilled like, by him? Yeah. Cause it was like, okay, you guys are doing something interesting was when we were doing blab and he was like, okay, tell us about the future. You're not big yet, but you're growing and we think you're interesting. And so, um, tell us what you know that the big companies don't know. And they would ask questions, like very good questions like, like that. Like what is the, um, if we're us, one of the questions he asked was, what is, uh, what are we stupid for not doing? Like when you look at our business, uh, what do you look at? And you just say, well, you are stupid for not doing this. This is our enterprise version of trends, Brad <laughs> is having that. Nice. Uh, so anyways, that's what I learned from the, from these guys. I thought it was pretty awesome. God, that's badass. Who are the other three companies? Uh, one was Alfred. Um, the skim the, was there. Um, oh, I, you told me. I this. told you about this because I was sitting there. Well, I was like, so Fox is an investor of the skim. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was cool. And in fact, I heard the guys in the back, because I was sitting at the back when that was happening, is like probably not the people who were doing it. Um, I, or they weren't investors at the time, and they were just like, like, <laughs> They were like, yeah, this is cool and all, but, and then they were just like ragging on it in the back. Cause they were just like, look, it, you know, here's what the numbers are. Here's where, you know, this is not big enough yet for it to matter to us. And, but Rupert at the front was kind of like, what do we not know? Like about this business? He wasn't, it's easier if you're a huge conglomerate to just look at everything and say, you're small, you mean nothing. And that's what the guys in the back were doing. But at the front, Rupert was sort of like email. Interesting. Tell me more. And like was going through these, like. You know, you could tell he was searching for what he doesn't know um, rather than the guys at the back thinking they know everything and not really being open to learning something new from the people who are talking. Crazy. 